know what that sound was? Here's another video. That was a plane creating a shock and breaking the sound barrier. Recently, there have been a few videos by Destin on Smarter Every Day where he talks about bullets and whips producing shocks. But what exactly is a shock? Let's find out on today's episode. Hi, I'm Nikhilesh. And I'm Kushal. We're, We're the, the two broke, broke scientists. scientists. At the molecular level, fluid particles travel in a continuum. When an obstruction is suddenly introduced in the flow, something interesting happens. The particles in front of it slow down instantaneously, creating an increase in local pressure. Since the fluid is a continuum, the information of whatever happens in one place is transmitted to other regions in the form of pressure waves. This pressure wave then causes the oncoming fluid to adjust its properties. Don't these pressure waves remind you of something? Doesn't sound also travel in the form of compressions and rare fractions through a medium? Information propagation in a fluid happens through acoustic waves which travel at the speed of sound. What if the fluid particles are travelling faster than the speed of sound? Since the information transfer cannot happen faster than the speed of sound, these fast moving particles don't have any information about the obstruction in front until they actually reach it. The moment they reach it, an extreme collision of particles with themselves and the object occurs which manifests itself as a shock wave. A good analogy to information transfer in fluids are traffic waves. Take a look at this busy roundabout where one of the cars suddenly slows down. The driver behind this car receives information in the form of visual signals and he adjusts his speed. You can clearly see this wave of information passing backwards even though the cars are still moving forward. If the cars were moving so fast that the drivers were not able to process the visual information, they would then crash into each other. That's exactly what happens in a shockwave. You would have heard of the Mach number, a dimensionless number which is very important while studying shocks. Mach number is basically the ratio of the velocity of a fluid to the velocity of sound in that medium. So clearly, if the Mach number is greater than 1, it means that the fluid travels faster than the speed of sound meaning that there is no time for information to propagate. These are called as supersonic flows. A moving shock is called a shock wave, which is very thin, somewhere in the order of 200 nanometers. And it is in this region that the fluid undergoes sudden change in properties. The Mach number decreases across a shock wave, along with a sudden rise in pressure, density and temperature. A shock wave is also an irreversible process because of the extreme reactions produced by the collision of the particles. In some applications of aerospace engineering, we try to avoid shocks because they cause vibrations and an increase in drag. Even in commercial aircraft, while the plane itself might not go beyond Mach 1, there are regions over the wing where the flow can become locally supersonic. This is the exact region why commercial aeroplanes have swept back wings. When air now flows over the wing, it sees a thinner wing because only a component of the velocity is perpendicular to it and doesn't accelerate to supersonic speeds. When a stationary object emits sound waves at a certain frequency, the waves are generally spherical in nature and travel at the speed of sound. The moment an object starts moving, the sound waves in front of the object compress, increasing the apparent frequency and the ones behind elongate, decreasing the apparent frequency. This effect is called the Doppler effect. When the object travels faster than the speed of sound, the sound waves that are emitted form a cone known as the Mach cone. The thunderous clap that you heard at the beginning of the video was when the camera entered the shock cone. This phenomena is what engineers took advantage of while designing stealth aircrafts like the SR-71 Blackbird, which travelled at supersonic speeds. By the time people on the ground heard the plane, it was well beyond the reach of missiles. Shock waves produce a lot of change in properties, but it's not always easy to visualize changes like pressure or density with our eyes. That's where interesting visualization techniques like Schlieren or shadowgraphy become really useful. Mediums with different densities have different refractive indices, meaning that if light passes through the medium, it changes direction. We use this property of light to see all the cool images of shockwaves. If you want to build a Schlieren setup at home, make sure to watch Derek's video at Veritasium. So shockwaves aren't so shocking after all, are they? Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions, don't forget to leave a comment below. And finally, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye!